Today we've got a nice Tina TI simulation of our comparators, the subject we looked at the other day. So here's our circuit. We've got a 741, very standard uh, common op amp sitting out here, and we're running this on plus and minus 15 volts DC. And I've got a 10K ohm load. And what we're going to do is we're going to drive this with a couple of DC inputs. So first, we have 2 volts on the non-inverting input and 1 volt on the inverting input. So remember what the rule is. Essentially, if the plus input is more positive than the minus input, then the output should go to saturation, saturation being a volt or two below the power supply. So in this case, right, the plus input is more positive than the minus input. So we expect the output to go up to maybe 13, 14 volts, just a DC level here at the output. All right, let's give this a shot. So we'll come up to analysis. We'll do a DC analysis. And I'll just use my probe here to just double check. Two volts, one volt, there's 13 volts at the output. It's perfect. Okay. All right. Now, what if we change these around a little bit? Let's take the power supply over here at 2 volts, and we'll make it negative 2 volts. So this should flip things, right? So now this is negative, and we should see the opposite. And sure enough, there's our negative 13 volts with minus 2 and, and 1 coming in. All right. What about the whole power supply thing? What if we had 9-volt uh, batteries running this? And by the way, if you didn't notice, this says 9, but I wired it negatively. All right, so this thing should um, start clipping out here at maybe 7 or 8 volts. And sure enough, there we go, negative 7. Um, and if we flip this, you know, if we went to plus 2 like we had originally, there should be a uh, plus 7. Okay, so far so good. Now, you might ask, well, what happens if, um, you know, we set these two inputs the same? Remember, on paper, right, if we had perfect op amp, um, we should get zero at the output. Now, when you simulate this, that might happen. It depends on the kind of um, model you're using over here. If you're using a, a virtual, you know, sort of an ideal device, that might happen. Um, the reality is that doesn't that doesn't really happen. Um, so this this particular model, this is why I've chosen. Uh, you know, a real device rather than just a, a simplified virtual op amp over here. Um, we do get a clipping level. We do get uh, you know, nearly 7 volts. Um, and depending on uh, the model that we use, we might get something slightly different. Okay, so let's really make things interesting now. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this source, this DC source. And in its place, we're going to throw in an AC source. So what I want over here is a nice sine wave. I would just leave them over here. OK, no DC level. We're going to get rid of the unit step, select up a sine wave. Um, let's make this 2 volts and 100 hertz. All right, what do you think is going to happen at this point? You know, sometimes this source, right, so it's a 2 volt uh, peak source, sometimes this source is going to be larger than the 1 volt, so we would expect a positive clip. Sometimes it's going to be less than 1 volt. As a matter of fact, the majority of time it's going to be less than 1 volt, and we would expect to see a negative clip. 
So to see this, because now we're talking about an AC output, let's go and take a look at a transient analysis. Um, let's set this up. I already set this up for 20 milliseconds. And um, we don't actually need the excitation because we've got the non-inverting and inverting inputs. So let's give this a run. Stretch this out so we can see it a little better. And uh, add our... Okay, so our two inputs, non-inverting and um, inverting, are the green and the sort of maroon out here. So this straight DC value, that's the inverting input at one volt. And then the sine wave, obviously, is VG1, our, our uh, source. Okay. All right. The big square wave is the load voltage out here. So notice what happens. Whenever the uh, positive input is more positive, we get a positive pulse. Whenever it goes negative with respect to the minus input, we get a negative pulse. So we could play with this. You know, if we had uh, an adjustable value out here, maybe had a potentiometer, um, we could change the width of this pulse. That's a way of creating sort of a, a variable duty cycle square wave. One possibility. Something we'll take a look at uh, in a future chapter. But that's the mix, right? So it's very simple. You just um, draw the two things together, right? Draw the two inputs, and wherever the positive input, the non-inverting input is more positive, you know, you're going to get a high output. Everywhere else, you're going to get a low output. Okay? All right. Beauty.